This is a 60-year-old woman who is referred with a fixed dilated atonic pupil that transluminates from the left eye. She has significant glare. This all happened after she had endophthalmitis that resolved in the left eye. And the retina looks great. She has great visual potential, but she's bothered by glare and floaters. And you can see here that there's vitreous traction. Uh, you can see the vitreous pointing inferiorly. The iris is stuck to the anterior capsule. And there's all these inflammatory deposits on the back of the cornea. So the goal here is to go ahead and do a pars plate of vitrectomy and try to bring this uh, iris down with a cerclage so she's not stuck with all this glare. The implant itself appears to be stable. The haptics are covered by the anterior capsule, uh, even though there's a radial tear in the posterior capsule. So I don't think uh, we need to do anything with that uh, except to uh, treat the residual astigmatism with an LRI. So here we're doing a vitrectomy and cleaning up this uh, turbid, uh, cloudy vitreous that has a lot of debris left over from when she had uh, endophthalmitis, which she's really mostly recovered from. Her macula looks great. Um, so uh, we've done an anterior vitrectomy through the pars plane, and now we're going back using the posterior visualization and uh, completing the vitrectomy and removing all of this uh, uh, vitreous that's uh, has this inflammatory debris left over in it. This will also release the vitreous traction that we showed you earlier uh, at six o'clock, uh, wrapping around the uh, inferior haptic. Uh, we're now injecting dilute triamcinolone into the anterior chamber to stain for any vitreous. We're gonna move the infusion line into the anterior chamber and um, clean this uh, triamcinolone out. Um, the uh, iris is fused in the anterior capsule at this inferior haptic, so we're breaking those adhesions. And uh, now we'll go ahead and come back in with a protractor to clean up that fibrotic strand that we've uh, liberated with the uh, kugel and hook. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, inject myocol and try to uh, bring down the pupil a bit if we can, but also to uh, clear these uh, inflammatory precipitates from the cornea endothelium with a bit of a jet stream as we inject. And you can see that we're able to blast those uh, keratic precipitates off the endothelium and uh, remove them with the vitrector. Uh, so now we're going to inject viscoelastic into the interchamber and go ahead and do our pupil cerclage. Uh, this is tenoproline on a CIF4 needle. Uh, I'm going to come in with my right hand through a paracentesis and use my left hand with a micrograsper coming through another paracentesis to just sort of wrap the iris around the uh, tip of the needle. And you want to make these bites as close together as you can so you'll get a nice smooth round pupil rather than the one that looks like a starfish. Uh, so I just sort of wrap the um, iris around the needle. And after I take about six bites, I'm gonna grab the tip of the needle and pull it out through a paracentesis 90 degrees away. Uh, I now wanna hold the iris back as I pull the needle through. Otherwise, uh, the friction of the needle running through the iris will pull the iris out the paracentesis and traumatize it. So now I've switched hands and I'm gonna use my left hand to drive the needle and the right hand to work the iris around the tip of the needle. So even though my left hand is holding the uh, needle holder, it's really uh, my right hand that's doing the bulk of the work here uh, by wrapping the iris around the um, needle. So now again, I'm gonna pull this uh, suture out 90 degrees away through a paracentesis and hold the iris back as I pull the needle out so the iris doesn't come with it. I'll inject a little viscoelastic. So now we're halfway through our cerclage. Uh, again, I'm gonna use my left hand for this part and use the right hand to wrap the iris around the needle. Uh, and I'm gonna edit this a bit because you've already seen most of how I do this. Uh, holding the needle with the left hand and doing all of the heavy lifting here with the right hand because I am right hand dominant and uh, wanna take advantage of that as much as I can. But the angle here is better if I hold the needle 
uh, with my left hand. And I want a needle holder that's strong enough so that the needle doesn't wobble in the needle holder. Um, so now we pull this out as we hold the iris back. We want to make sure there's enough viscoelastic in the anterior chamber so that uh, the eye isn't too soft. Uh, so now we're going to complete the cyclage. This is the last uh, 90 degrees, which I'm doing with my right hand and coming out through the same paracentesis. I came out earlier when I was suturing from the other side, the other direction, going counterclockwise. Uh, now going clockwise on this side, we come out through the same paracentesis, uh, holding the iris back. Uh, so we now completed a 360 degree suture pass. Uh, now we just have to tie this and adjust the tension. We'll inject a little viscoelastic to push this iris away from our incision. Uh, so now we're going to do a three throw. Uh, grab this end and pull this down to my paracentesis so the knot is just outside the eye. Bring the knot in the eye and tighten it by having one side of the suture on the outside, one side of the suture on the inside. I'm going to try to bring this down so it matches our other eye around 3 to 3.5 millimeters. And uh, I want to be careful not to make it too small because. When I lock the uh, three throw with a single pass here, this is the locking, first locking throw, and I tighten this, it's actually going to bring the uh, pupil opening down about another half millimeter to a millimeter. You can see that right here. Uh, now I'm going to do the final uh, one uh, reverse throw here. So it's three, one, one, and this locks everything uh, at the final pupil size. Um, and I cut this uh, on both sides. And so now we've completed our cyclage, and I think it looks uh, nice and round and smooth. We remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber with the anterior infusion. Uh, once this is completed, uh, we're going to go ahead and do our limbal relaxing incisions. The patient had about 1.5 diopters of residual astigmatism. So I've set the diamond blade based on pachymetry, and I'm cutting on the steep 60 degree axis. And this was all in my surgical plan prior to doing this case. Uh, we pull the trocars and the case is completed. Thank you for your attention to this case.